It's time for Gemini. This year, we're creating characters out of every single star sign. So if you've missed Aries or Taurus, you might want to head over to those first. We're creating a backstory, a world that all of the characters fit in. First things first, we're going to go on Pinterest, have a look, get some ideas, sketch out the design of the character, and then when it comes to painting this character, we're going to be talking about what it means to be a Gemini, where this character's come from, where they're going, and how they fit into this story. The board we're using is on my Pinterest, it's character design design star sign and it's got every single one in there and it's just in a little bit of an odd order so today we're on Gemini. What are the core traits of a Gemini? For starters the colours are bright yellows and light blues which is a cool colour palette. Oh that is tiny look at the size of that pencil now. These are the colours that we're going to be using. The symbol is Gemini are the twins. It's May 21st to June 20th. The element is air and they are ruled by Mercury. The flower is a daffodil. I don't know if we're gonna be using that if I'm honest. Geminis have some really interesting traits. They are expressive, clever, curious, but also articulate, independent, youthful. Some of the negative traits are also really interesting. We've got deceptive, unpredictable, sly, inconsistent, cunning, fidgety, impatient, unpredictable. Wait, I've already said that. They're unpredictable. So that gives us a lot of traits to work with. Looking at the art inspo now, we've got this one, which is absolutely gorgeous. I love the idea of doing two characters like that. Oh, wrong way. This one I really loved as well, the way that they are framed. I love the composition. I thought this one was really cool too. And this one, I love that they've made it look like two different characters. This one as well, I love the framing of it. This one is the same because a lot of Gemini is the fact that they are so impulsive and like they are two beings. So moving on to the next part, what I really liked was rather than doing two separate characters, something like this where it's like one character that's like overlapping the other, if that makes sense. A little bit like this with two forms of light because they are the same person and obviously we can't use red. This is yellow and blue, which is quite interesting because obviously if we overlap them together, we're going to get green and I don't want that. The other way that I thought of going was doing dramatic lighting which I have done before. That video isn't out yet on my channel. But this is how the painting turned out. It's got pretty dramatic lighting and the colour theme is pretty spot on for what we want to do. It would be very difficult though in watercolour to make the yellow and the blue not green. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that because the painting that I did previously with dramatic lighting and the same kind of colour theme didn't go great. Mm. Having lines like this over the background or over the top. This one I just love the positioning. Again, this has got the lines over the top, which I really love the style of. The character, who are they going to look like? Well, Hedy Lamar, I think is how their name's pronounced. I think this is what the character's going to look like. Honestly, she just has this timeless look that I think is absolutely perfect. So we're combining a lot of things here. We're going to have two heads, but they're going to look like the same person. So it's like a feeling rather than like two separate people. So it is like one character that's got two personalities. Then we need to do yellow for the highlight, but we're going to get green if we had blue on top of the yellow, so it's gonna have to be very careful. This is the kind of idea that I'm explaining. Let's move on to the character and then we'll come back to this one once it's sort of fleshed out a little bit more. Oh, okay, that was difficult. I think the idea is kind of put together, so we'll go back to the thumbnail and add the faces. Honestly, I think this might be the creepiest character I've ever made. <laughs> this is what we've got. It's gonna go a little bit darker into blue on either side. I don't know how I'm gonna make them not be green. Obviously, I'm gonna have to try and get the hair accurate and the makeup because I want it to look of that time. So I need to get that all completely correct. 
and I need both the characters to look identical. That's the hardest part for me. I'm gonna get on with the sketch now. I'll see you as we're painting. To be honest, I didn't end up using a lot of the research for Gemini when it came to creating this story, but I do still find it fascinating, so let's learn about a Gemini together. Gemini is the third star sign in the astrological calendar, representing the twins. An air sign, Gemini is known for its adaptability, whilst popular media and stereotypes would label them as two-faced, this is not quite right. They are seen as dualistic, as both incredibly intelligent with massive potential for growth and yet incredibly emotional, having to wear their heart on their sleeves. They go from task to task with anything being able to take their attention, but not for long. The common ground is that Gemini are always curious. They want to experience everything. This makes them incredibly social and inventive, but always curious. They want to experience everything to the point that they would split themselves into twins to experience twice as much. Elle Wood from Legally Blonde, Elizabeth Swan from Pirates of the Caribbean, and Tony Stark from Marvel are all Geminis, showing that dualistic and curious nature, pushing the boundaries beyond all expectations around them. But to be honest, I had the idea for Gemini's story quite a while ago, so here's Gemini. It was early in the morning with the sun only just cresting the walls of the small town. A chill mist clung to the ground as the people were just starting their day. The small town woke up. The smell of freshly baked breads and pastry ebbed and flowed through the streets. The bakery was already up and running. A soft glow of candles and a fire lit up the dim buildings around it. Inside, a woman worked, kneading the dough, shaping the loaves, and bringing out the baked goods to cool. All whilst avoiding the two young children running around her. I know you two are excited, but please, darlings, it's dangerous, the woman said gently. The two girls stopped running, looked up to her, and smiled sweetly. Sorry, mom, said a young Aries. Taurus agreed. It's okay, Aries mom sighed. How about a story? The children smiled and stood by the table as Aries mom lifted them both onto it. How about the long winter? Or the night in the river? The mother asked. Mom, we know those ones. Do you know any others? The door of the bakery swung open and a chill breeze blew, making the two girls shiver. An old man entered and Ares yelled in glee. The old hero smiled. How about this time I tell you a tale? Suggested the hero with an old warm smile. Would you? Of course, little one. Right then. The old hero took a seat. The two young girls leant forward eagerly. This is the story of the lady with two hearts. A long time ago, when the kingdom was just finding its place in the world, there was a child, a young girl. Born to a lord and lady, the girl never knew suffering or strife, instead living a life of comfort and opulence. Sure, by the world's standards, the lord was not amongst the richest nor the most powerful, but in a small realm, the family was respected and treated well within the courts of nobility. As an only child, the young girl was given every opportunity she desired. She was the sole heir to the Lord's lands and was given a rather unique education. Alongside the more traditional lessons of the airs and graces of a lady, she was given an education of science, mathematics and history. When the Lord and Lady deemed it appropriate, the young girl was given a trainer. A trainer in combat. She wasn't trained to be a Lord or a Lady but as a just, fair, and independent ruler. And the people loved her. She was simply adored by all that met her. Everything seemed to come naturally to the young lady, as if every lesson had already been taught to her, and every new face she'd seen before. As the young lady grew, so did the kingdom. With the kingdom's growth came conflict. Before long, the fledgling kingdom became embroiled in a bitter war. The Old War, a war which lasted for centuries, to the point that all memory of who and what started the conflict had long since been forgotten. The war started as a war of armies, and eventually eroded the memories of the nation. It began to forget itself. This conflict weighed on the soul of the kingdom, hearts growing darker. This growing darkness affected those behind the high walls and closed doors of the palaces. The young lady fell ill, 
At this time, she was a young woman, and just like all ladies of the courts, she was expected to court a suitor. But instead, a darkness had gripped her. She began talking to herself, her thoughts and her voice became erratic. Her parents feared for her. Her grace and beauty lit up the room as always, but that never lasted. Days and weeks would go past when their daughter changed. She was brutal. Her conversation was a weapon, a knife that pierced through lies and deception like butter. The lady became cold, calculating, almost vengeful. She would quash all that tried to get close to her or her family without remorse. The poor souls were found with evidence of espionage, irrefutable proof that the lady had protected her family, but once the time of the change happened, the lady became her cheery, graceful half again. She held no memories of the plots or deceptions. The young lady was cursed. Cursed with two hearts. One was kind, caring, and able to charm all around her. A perfect diplomat and leader. The other was brutal and brilliant, the perfect strategist. She could predict events yet to come. The young lady eventually managed to control this gift and took on a new name, Lady Gemini. When Lady Gemini revealed herself to the world, the kingdom was quick to employ her skills. Her heart of the past and present made her the greatest military leader the kingdom could ask for. Armies fought harder for her than any other general. All negotiations she attended were smooth and fair. Feuds that echoed for decades were forgotten overnight. It was as if she could reach into the hearts and minds of all those around her, swaying them to her will. The heart of the future, however, was what made her into the legend she became. Before, it was believed that she had great insight and natural instinct that would never lead her astray. But now, as she picked apart the strategies of the enemy, deftly avoiding ambushes and traps, it was plain to all of those who could see the magic. She could read the future. As the war came to a close and the kingdom relied more and more on Lady Gemini, a darkness now followed her. For every battle she won, for every life she saved, others were lost. It was no secret that she was almost single-handedly winning the old war, but those who lost people couldn't help but blame Gemini. Why had she, who could see into the mists of the future, let their sons and daughters die? Grief and fear stoked the fires of doubt. She couldn't be everywhere, and she couldn't see it all, only fragments. But how can you explain that to a grieving family? Eventually, with the help of some trusted allies, Lady Gemini claimed peace in the land. A war lasting centuries was over. Her magic kept time at bay. Gemini seemed no older than 40, despite living for hundreds of years. As the fear and suspicion no longer had a war to focus on, all that loss was blamed solely on Lady Gemini. She made the only choice she could. She vanished. As time passed and memories faded, the war and its heroes passed into legend. Lady Gemini was forgotten. In a deep woods near a small town, a woman relaxed in her solitude. Gemini was at peace. Being far from people actually suited her. And it wasn't as if she was short on company. She always had her other heart to talk to, to reminisce. The occasional visit from an old friend from the nearby town would keep her up to date on the comings and goings beyond the woods. And Lady Gemini, the woman of the woods, was content. One morning, while sitting on her front porch, she felt the pressure of a magic beyond anything she'd felt before. She felt the aura far sooner than she saw who it belonged to. It was powerful, so full of life. She swore it almost smelled like pine trees. She looked up as a young woman stumbled from amongst the trees. The girl was young, her hair in braids and what seemed like fresh tattoos on her arms. Intrigued at this new guest, Gemini pushed out with her thoughts, something she'd not done in an age. Well, aren't you an interesting one? Taurus fled into the woods, Gemini smiled as she ran. We'll be sure to ask our friend about that one, won't we sister of mine? The shimmering face that overlapped her own smiled as well. Yes, my dear, he will be very pleased to hear we found a new protégé. Well, that's Gemini, what do you think? I love the concept, I love that we didn't end up with green, that was a really difficult task. 
the faces aren't as alike as I would have liked. They do kind of look like two different people, which wasn't what I was going for. But you know what? I love the concept and I think it's a pretty cool painting. Let me know down below, what do you think of this one? It's very different. And if you're interested in having any of these characters as a print or sticker, they are on my imprint store now down below. This original will actually be for sale on my Etsy. Hopefully sometime soon, you'll have to keep your eyes peeled for that one. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you've missed any in this series, the playlist is down below. It's definitely worth seeing the others because they do kind of interlink. The next star sign is Cancer. We're gonna be painting every single one this year. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any. Thank you for being here, I really appreciate it. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you on Sunday with a new video. Bye-bye.